There's some amazing possibilities with generative VFX. This plant is a simple example. Same with this slime. These can involve some masking, but there's a super easy way to do that right in runway. Or the even easier method is expanding from an end frame like this. You can even generate VFX assets. There's endless possibilities and it's all pretty easy to get these shots that would take a lot of time and skill or a huge budget to get otherwise. I'll cover a lot more examples as we go through, but let's start simple. The slime and the doorway portal were done in the same way using the last frame from the clip I filmed as the first frame of the generation in runway. There's a few ways to get that last frame. In Premiere, you just click export frame if you have a video open in QuickTime Player on a Mac, when you're on the last frame, click Command C, then open up Preview, then File, New from Clipboard. Or something that can work no matter what computer you're on is Video to JPEG on EasyGIF.com. Once you have that, open up Runways Gen 3, upload that frame, then type what you want to happen. This is the prompt I used. Man opens a door revealing a portal to space. The camera then flies through the doorway into space with swirling interstellar objects and galaxies. Fairly simple prompt. Then I want to make sure first is selected that we'll use this as the first frame for the generation. In some scenarios, you may want to use last where it will end on that frame. And you choose either five or 10 seconds. I'll do the full 10 seconds for this one and generate. It takes a couple minutes and here's what I got this time. This isn't bad. The arm got pretty weird at the beginning, but this prompt did pretty well consistently. I only re-rolled it a couple times for the one I wanted earlier. From there, all you have to do is place the clips one after the other. Now in my case, I film in a 16 by nine aspect ratio, but runway generates a little differently at 1280 by 768. That's the pixels, it's five by three aspect ratio. So using a video that's already in that aspect ratio is easiest, but it's not a big deal either way. I just have to resize a little bit and they'll sync up perfectly. and it's really that easy. Pretty crazy. How else would you have been able to get that shot this easily? And it was the same process for the slime. So here's the prompt I used. A static shot of a man at a desk inside a modern studio. A waterfall of multicolored slime falls from the ceiling and covers the man. The slime drenches his entire face and body. I added the last sentence because in my first two generations, the slime didn't land on me, so I reiterated it. Now, some of the prompts I'll get to in a second took a lot more tries, but these two were pretty easy. This one might even look better than the one I got earlier. And as a quick side note, I did also try running these images with the same prompts through LumaLab's Dream Machine and Kling. I think Runway looked better in every case, but I'll show the comparisons later. I've got a lot more to cover with generative VFX, but it's also possible to create a video without recording or editing your own footage at all. With today's sponsor, NVIDIA AI, you can transform a simple prompt into a publish-ready video. You start with a detailed prompt. This one's about lighting tips, something I need to work on. Then you can choose the audience, the look and feel, and the platform you plan to upload to, and submit. Then after just a few minutes, you have the full video. Good lighting is the unsung hero of the video world. It can make or break your masterpiece, even if your masterpiece is just you ranting about your favorite video game. But fear not, aspiring Spielbergs. You don't need a Hollywood studio budget to make your videos look amazing. If you don't like that first version, you can hit regenerate and get a whole new version. From there to fine tune your video further, you can edit the video using natural language in the command box. That includes changing the voiceover, swapping out scenes, adding captions, or updating the hook. Then the edit button lets you make manual edits to the media, script, and music. Editing the media lets you swap out the B-roll with footage from the NVIDIA library or your own clips. The script editing option lets you make changes to your script, then it will adjust the voiceover and re-edit the B-roll to match. Then you can also swap out the song. There's some more advanced options as well, like voice cloning. I'll switch this over to my voice since I've already cloned mine in here. Reflectors. These bad boys bounce light back onto your subject. I can also translate this into any language. Diese Jungs reflektieren das Licht zurück auf euer Motiv, füllen Schatten aus. 
So with NVIDIA, you go from idea to fully edited video incredibly fast. You can generate four videos per week for free to remove the watermark, access voice cloning, and generate more. Upgrading to the paid plans starts at $20 a month. You can try it out for free using the link down in the description, and thank you to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. Now moving on to the plant and monster shot. For these, there is an additional step involved to generate the mask. That can also be done right in runway. I'll show that after I generate the videos. Now, it is easiest to use a separate shot of the scene without whatever it is that you'll be masking out. In this case, it's without me in it, so Runway can see the full window. I was originally going to do this with zombies, but the zombies just weren't looking great. A couple were okay. I also got a few generations where they were playing instruments, like some sort of zombie folk band. No idea why, it was very strange. So I ended up switching to the monster since it seemed like it was going to burn through too many credits trying to figure out how to prompt for the zombies. This is the final prompt I used. A static shot of a window. A monster with glowing red eyes breaks through the glass window from the outside while the camera remains static. Glass shatters as the monster climbs through the window. So you can see it didn't ever follow that perfectly. It might have been able to get it right with enough tries, but again, it is really easy to burn through credits. I didn't want to use them all up on that one shot. I think I did a little over 10 generations total between the zombies and the monster. I also weirdly had issues with the plant growing. I thought that would be the easiest shot of all, but it kept saying it couldn't use the prompt. There's no word I was using that should have been triggering any sensors, but I would try like five to 10 times before I'd get one that would generate. When that happens, they do refund you your credits, but it was happening even when I used the prompt that they used in their demo video word for word. It would still fail. I think it took over an hour for me to get a shot that worked and also looked good. And that was the only time I ran into that issue for this video, but it has happened to me before on a different prompt. So just FYI, that's an issue that you may run into sometimes and it can be pretty frustrating if you do. Anyways, once I have that shot, I need to put it underneath the shot of me speaking. To mask out the background, I can do that right in Runway. They have a ton of other really useful video tools in here. This one is called Remove Background. So I upload the clip, put that on the timeline, then select the area that I want to keep. It will make a keyframe with that selection. You can select more or less if you need to. Then it will apply that mask over the entire clip, tracking all the movement. This one is a pretty easy shot for it to figure out. You can scrub through to see if there's any spots it missed. If there is, you can do the same process and it will add another keyframe there. And for problem areas, you can make manual adjustments as well. Shots like this, it does a really good job on the first try. And when you click done masking, you can watch the preview to double check and jump back into the mask if there's any issues. This is good, so I'll export. Gen 3 is really fun, but this background remover is actually the number one tool I use in Runway. Now in Premiere, I layer that on top of the clip I generated. Then I need to remove the green. This part may have a different name depending on what video editor you're using, but pretty much all of them will have this. In Premiere, it's called Ultra Key. I apply that effect, then use the eyedropper to select the green, and it's gone. But sometimes the masks are a little harsh around the edge, I'll bring up the choke a little, which takes the edge in a few pixels. Then I'll add some soften as well. That'll make it blend much more naturally. And that's all there is to it. And that plant growing worked the exact same way. Now for all of these, adding sound effects really helps sell it. Sound design can be one of the most important parts of video editing. I'm definitely still learning. I use a combination of Storyblocks and Eleven Labs. The Storyblocks is a paid site for stock image, video, and audio. There's plenty of free alternatives. I wouldn't recommend paying for a site like that unless you're doing video all the time. Pixabay is the free option I've used the most personally, but there are lots of others. And I also use Eleven Labs where you can generate sound effects from a text prompt. Like for this one, I could say monster growling. Then it will generate four options. These were all really good. I also used it for the plant growing. On the timeline, you can see I actually layered a bunch of different sound effects. 
The other option I wanted to cover was VFX assets, where you generate something on a green screen so you can use it however you want, like what I did with the orb. There's tons of ways to use this, and most stock platforms will have this type of thing, like flames, orbs, explosions, splashes, and on and on. But you can also generate them if you can't find something you're looking for on a different site, or if you want something really specific. Just add into the prompt on a green screen background. And this orb looks awesome, and that one worked on the first try. Now that I have my orb, I'll bring that into Premiere and remove the background just like before with the Ultra key. And I'll adjust the settings a little bit. For the example I have, I need movement. It is a short shot, so I'll just do it manually with keyframes. And I'll use the transform effect since it has the option to add motion blur by adjusting the shutter angle. And I'll place it where I want and set a keyframe. And I'll move forward five frames, move it a little bit to track my hand. That will automatically set the next keyframe. And I'll do that every five frames. Then switch to every two frames at the end when my hand was moving faster. Now I'll make the movement smoother, the time interpolation, Bezier. And there it is, that looks awesome. Again, a lot of the time, all you'll need to do is just place this onto the scene and resize it. Like if I was adding an explosion or a lightning strike or something like that. I did a comparison with some of the other leading video tools. To make it fair, I'll show the first generation I got from each without any rerolls. I used Luma's Dream Machine, Kling, and Pixverse. Kling and Dream Machine did all right here. Pixverse, not so much. For the monster, they were actually all pretty good. I really like the one from Pixverse. Now, Runway is the only one that consistently followed the static shot part of the prompt. The others tended to add at least a little camera movement, which would ruin the effect when you overlay the subject, unless you tracked the motion to that as well, which is not worth the hassle for these shots. Kling was the only other one that listened to the plant growing prompt. The slime was a struggle for all of them. Kling tried. Kling and Pixverse both kept the static shot this time. The orbs all looked good, although Kling was the only other one that worked for this use case since the others got cut off around the edges. That's not the generator's fault though, since I didn't prompt for that. Overall, Runway was better in every single shot, but the others weren't bad, and with more rerolls, I may have been able to get there with each of them. Video tools have come a really long way in the past few months. Now here's some other people using this technique that should give you a lot of ideas. I'll start with the ones that Runway themselves showcased. I was really good at fluid simulation. The physics of the water flooding out of this building is really accurate. And we got a big plant growing in the back here. I've seen quite a few using this colorful slime. That's why I tried it for mine. It does a really good job at that. This big yellow fabric blowing in the wind is amazing, especially with that bit of transparency where you can see the background through it. I liked this one with this dog that I guess has magical pee. And then this picture that prints out and comes alive, there's a lot of places you could go with that idea. Runway posted another full thread of these. I won't go through them all, but I thought this one was particularly good. So it starts with just this shot of the sky and buildings, then it turns into a monster walking down the street. It's got a really solid walk cycle. There's some weirdness in the buildings if you look at the details, but for how much the shot transforms, this is really solid. Here's from Cristobal Valenzuela, pouring a magical drink into a glass. He did a really good job at making this seamless. I thought this one was cool from Jared Liu, adding some effects to photos he'd taken around New York City. Dave Clark added a creepy clown in his house. There's a lot of ways you could use this for horror shots where it's like darker scenery, so there's less details that Runway needs to get right. This one Alex Petrescu did using images someone uploaded to Unsplash is great. It's two and a half minutes long. He goes through a ton of ideas in it. I won't play this whole thing, but it has so many examples. You can watch that to get more ideas of what types of shots work. It also goes really well with that song that he has to it, but I don't think it's something I can play on YouTube. 
There's another really good one Runway posted combining a bunch of different shots all around New York City into one piece. The music adds a lot to it, but it's another that sounds like a song I wouldn't be able to play on here. They go through tons of ideas in this as well. It seems like Runway has some really great artists on their team. If you like this video, you'll probably also like this video where I cover seven AI video tools and different ways to use them. You'll probably also like futurepedia.io where you can find the best AI tool for any use case, see AI news and innovations, browse a curated list of AI tutorials and a lot more. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.